Kenosis, a devotional for the seasons of Advent and Christmas, produced by Northside Church. Saturday, January 6th, the Kenosis of God, the Epiphany of the King. Our scripture passage today comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, 7 through 12, and verse 16. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Just like the Magi, we have reached the end of our very long journey. Beginning with the first Sunday of Advent through the season of Christmas, and now finally arriving at Epiphany, we have explored and mapped the importance and purpose of God's kenosis in becoming the human being, Jesus of Nazareth. Epiphany is traditionally the day that we commemorate the visit of the Magi to the child king, Jesus Christ. The implications of this visit are manifold, to be sure, but two stand above all others. First, this visit marks the revelation of God's Messiah to the Gentiles, those outside the Jewish faith. God's kenosis is not limited to the Jews, but is poured out on all peoples. Second, yet perhaps more importantly, the three kings worshiping Jesus make it clear Christ is the King of Kings, the ultimate and final authority of creation. With Jesus' arrival, the kingdom of God is established on earth forever. And his life from this moment on will reflect the very character of God's kingdom, which begins in the little town of Bethlehem. Bethlehem was a tiny town, but it had a hefty heritage, being the hometown of King David. It had been prophesied that the Messiah would come from this village, linking him forever with David, the most popular king in Israel's history. We should not be surprised by God's use of such an insignificant place, first with David and now with the incarnation of God himself in Jesus Christ. Time and time again, we've seen that God uses the humble, the lowly, the outcast, and the otherwise unimportant to do his most essential and important work. In a sense, we can think of Bethlehem as the city of Kenosis, the birthplace of God's full self-emptying and revelation to us. King Herod, on the other hand, is just one of the many anti-Kenosis characters that we find in the Bible, especially in his response to Jesus Christ. His first thought when discovering that the true king of Israel had been born was to be disturbed. While the Magi had traveled many miles to worship this king, Herod had no inclination or intent to even move a step toward Jesus. It serves us to ask why Herod was so disturbed by what should have been good news. The answer, of course, is that he was full of himself. He was the official king of Israel, placed in power by the Roman authorities, and according to the Bible and history, he was ruthless, arrogant, and very far from being great. Herod stands as an example of what happens when we allow ourselves to rule and refuse to hand over power and self to God. Rather than joy, he is seized with panic, fear, and probably jealousy. Having been duped by the Magi, 
all of Herod's fear turns to rage. And in that rage, he does something that is quite possibly the most grotesque and violent act in the whole Bible, rivaled only by the action of Pharaoh in the time of Moses, a parallel that is not accidental. King Herod orders the murder of all the boys in the region two years old and younger. Let me say that again. Herod slaughters an unbelievable number of children. Tradition puts the number well into the thousands, and he does so in response to the birth of the baby Jesus. Sit with that for a moment. We love the seasons of Advent and Christmas because they mean for us the warmth and joy of family and friends. They are about gifts and giving, favorite movies and sparkling lights, the most wonderful time of the year. As I said at the very beginning, this is a season of fulfillment, full of our favorite things. And we get so caught up in the warmth of the Christmas miracle that we sometimes forget that the world around us does not accept the birth of Jesus Christ as good news. In fact, if we take the arrival of Jesus as King seriously, this is the worst news that some in this world can receive. Nobody embodies this fact better than Herod himself though he is far from the only one who has rejected and fought against the coming of the kingdom of God in this world. Fear, rejection, and even violence is the world's response to the advent of Jesus Christ, to God's kenosis, his full revelation of himself to us. Herod's is only the first response of the world. If we follow the story to its conclusion, which we will during the season of Lent, we find response after response just like this, culminating in the world's ultimate rejection of God's gift of kenosis, the cross. As we celebrate this day of Epiphany, we should ask ourselves, how have we truly responded to the arrival of Jesus and his revelation as the King of all creation? Are we like the Magi, who will travel any distance to empty ourselves before his feet? Or are we like Herod, who was so weighed down and full of himself that he wouldn't move an inch, except in the direction of resistance and rejection. Take a moment to reflect on the life and work of Northside. Do people perceive us as a Bethlehem? Are we the place that God can use to do his work? If not, how can we become so? Now think about the people of Northside, from our leadership down to the Sunday visitor. Are we like King Herod in that we are puffed up and refusing to hand over ourselves to Jesus Christ? What about you personally? How can we avoid, each of us, becoming like Herod? My prayer for us is that Northside Church becomes the new Bethlehem, tiny and insignificant in the world's eyes, but the birthplace of God's kingdom on earth. Let us pray. Now, God of peace, sanctify us through and through. May our whole body, soul, and spirit be found pure and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You who call us are faithful. We know you will do this. Amen.